And so one way you can imagine doing this, one way you can imagine doing this is say, hey, I, you know, I have a loose idea of what I want to be. I want to be a senior animator at Epic Games. So I'm going to take the job description of Epic Games and copy that and plonk it in here. And this is our um, pathway generator, which we're playing with. It takes a job description and you get a suggested pathway. So as a young person who's trying to figure out what they're doing in the world, where they've got to start, what skills they have or don't have, um, they can start to say, oh, cool, just give me a starting point. So to become, to get this job description, I'll need roughly character animation skills, animation for games, advanced animation skills, production and implementation skills, um, including things with like team collaboration. And this has been really helpful for us to say, uh, what skills do you have? What don't you have? What do you want to lean into? What don't you want to lean into? Um, and then these aren't adaptive, these aren't uh, current yet, but you can imagine that it starts to suggest classes and resources um, from our ecosystem. So that's how we're using um, ChatGPT and GPT-3 for um, customizing pathways. And the last thing I want to leave everyone with is basically uh, this thought, right? There's new goals, there's new conceptions of humans. Um, and I don't think I've found a good theory of moral development in education. Like we don't have a solid theory for like what develops good character. And this is something that I'm working on. And if you're interested in, I'd love to speak to you. Um, because if we create the technology of lesser gods, meaning atom bombs to wipe out cities, super intelligence, interplanetary travel, we must also develop the hearts of gods. And that means the right character development, the right empathy with all beings and all time and all space. Um, or otherwise we run the risk of having over leveraged things that do a lot of harm to the world. So that's my big question. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the talk. Amazing, Serge, thank you so much. Uh, I don't know if anybody's popped in any questions in the Padlet. Does anyone wanna just put their hand up and ask Serge a question? We've got time. Did anyone have a question or thought about what he just shared? You can feel free to add in the Padlet. And we, we can move on to Mara Simmons. Mara, let me just uh, share. Mara is um, the head of Center for Learning and Teaching. She's a school entrepreneur and parent, and she's gonna share a bit about how she's been using uh, ChatGPT in her own world of education. Over to you, Mara. Great. Thank you. And just a quick clarifier, I'm the um, leader of the global version. Um, CTL is uh, headed by Dr. Agodi Alagabe, and we are located in Abuja, Nigeria. And so it's our goal now in its 10th year to take it globally and celebrate the good work that's taking place in making a global version of the, of the program. So ChatGPT has been truly an amazing gift uh, as an educator and as a uh, school leader and instructional coach. I remember in December when it came out in our family, we all had a play. My 12-year-old daughter took her prompts from her assessment modules, put them into chat GPT, got the answers, identified where the errors were, fix those errors, sent it back into chat GPT and uh, came out with the accurate answer and her AI system for her school failed. <laughs> so we had a lot of good play. Um, as an educator, I've been playing with it in our school setting. And so I have a short slide deck to share with you what uh, it has been looking like. So let me just pull that up. Hopefully this will work. Um, here we go. Do you see? Yeah, I do. Okay, fantastic. So the big question I was addressing is, what are the short and long-term impacts of AI on teaching and learning? And it's obviously in its very new um, form, and I appreciate the ethics focus that it has taken in um, previous presentations. Um, I really look at the tool as that partner. So it's either your partner for learning and studying, it's your partner for co-planning, co-designing, it's that partner for doing some of the more mundane tasks as a leader. 
Um, and so these are all the different ways we have played with the, the chat GPT. And I really use the word play. Um, yes, I understand the ethics and the challenges and the questionability of taking essay prompts and getting answers um, generated. But that's part of that learning process and in unpacking what the system's actually generating and then identifying how can you actually make it better? So this becomes then the threshold of what good could look like. And then let's ramp it up. So now let's add those other elements. The other aspect I see is how it shifts our assessment practices, because we can't sustain these tests and these single point um, assessment practices. As uh, Robert mentioned earlier, the Oxford system, we need that interactivity. We need to check on learning um, for the longer term. So for students, um, this just took place. Uh, an AP English student, five weeks away from her exam, feels like she hasn't really read as much as she needed to, and is like, how do I possibly get on top of all that I need to read? And so I just had a play and I put into the, the system um, the question, what do I need to know for advanced placement English? And the system came back with, well, generically, here's what we need to do to prepare. And then I followed up with another question and I'll, I'll share this all with you so you can see what the conversation is. As Griffin pointed out earlier, it's not just getting a single answer. It's now then having a conversation with the system to fine tune the content and the material that it's generating for you. And teaching the skill of being critical and to take an analysis approach to what's being generated is absolutely critical. Um, and so I sent this off to the teacher. And so as a teacher, um, I played with, give me a, a five week lesson plan for how I can teach a Toulmin style of argumentative writing. And again, it spews out week one, week two, week three, this, these are the things that you should cover. These should be your unit objectives. These are the target goals. As an experienced teacher, it probably would take me 35, 40 minutes to write this plan. ChatGPT produced it in 30 seconds. So now I have at least a draft plan to work from and can now fine tune it and add my spin to the content or make changes as to what I need to do. Um, but how, how awesome it is to have this as a, a buddy, a planning buddy. Um, and then for instructional leaders, uh, this, this did just take place today. So um, in response to the English dilemma, um, I sent the chat GPT material to the English teacher to say, by the way, your students are not feeling fully prepared. Um, perhaps, you know, having them do a an engaging conversation with ChatGPT, they can each then choose a different book to further analyze and then put it together in a shared website or shared Google document so that they can then share their learning across the whole class. Um, so then as an instructional leader, I'm now giving the teacher some strategies as to help identify and um, make connections to those gaps that the students are feeling. Um, in addition, the mundane tasks, we've used it to write our parent letters, we've used it to uh, write up action plans, check accuracy for grant purposes, um, and so forth. So, um, but we don't ever take it at face value. So it, it, it truly is a tool. It's not the end product. Um, and so the things I want us to think about are, well, now that we have this tool, and I understand it's in infancy, um, what no longer matters in education? So as these students are sitting and preparing for their advanced placement exams, or their GCSE exams, or their A-level exams, I really wonder, I mean, I've always wondered, but now I really wonder as to, is this the end result that is going to 
develop into a future of a just world and society. And so I think it's important to identify what things we need to change, and we probably need to do it more rapidly. Um, and what do we really need to keep? And the changes, those are all kind of, you know, as industries change, we need to change. So assessment practices I mentioned, learning priorities, um, and this kind of connects to Serge's um, idea of working backwards from career pathways and the idea of a singular pathway. So it's no longer just going through the rhythms of, you know, going to your classes, getting your credits and graduating and so forth. And then likewise, what do we need to keep? So I think we're seeing a theme of that humanity piece is absolutely critical. Um, maintaining the, the ethos around diversity, inclusivity, and equity is really critical. Making sure that students have the skills to push thinking, push and ask questions, and use the tools that are around them. And so we've had this play, and it would be great to hear you know, how others are, have been engaging. Um, and then in addition to that, it's also understanding that this is just the beginning. So mm -hmm. I just received a resource of 40 different AI systems that uh, are to help in different aspects. So I think we need a, a tool to help us evaluate what do you really go after um, and to educate our students into understanding that. So it's you know taking financial literacy one step further. Um, so I'm open to questions uh, and I can share the link to the slide deck and our school and so forth. Thank you so much. Uh, does anybody want to just pop their hand up or ask questions away or you feel free to add in the Padlet as well? Does anybody have any questions from our or thoughts that came up? Otherwise, we're going to move on to Noan. Go ahead, Noan. Yeah, just uh, just a thought as we were discussing. First of all, it, it seems like uh, a lot of what you're sharing there was ways to become more efficient at systems that are currently in place. And then going backwards to Serge, he's talking about uh, identifying career pathways. And just the thought is arising in me that, oh my gosh, we've got we're still talking about careers in a conventional sense and backwards planning from those. We don't even know what those careers will become with this kind of technology. There's a whole new level where uh, our, our society is on this path where, uh, actually, Jesse sent me one where you used to have all these different roles and now you're looking at everybody being ideas people where creating these ideas for the future, whatever that may be, uh, whether it's creating a new animation or uh, a storybook or, or a school. Which, which I, just to respond real quick, no, and that's why I think it's absolutely critical. We need to be aware of um, the end results. Uh, and understand that it's not going to be what we know it to be today. And so building those essential skills around resiliency, perseverance, um, having a, a just approach, uh, that res respect, acceptance, um, all those aspects are absolutely critical. Um, because it's true, the careers that you know we have on Indeed and so forth are going to disappear rather rapidly. Thank you so much, Mara, for your contribution. And Noan, over to you. And then we are going to split into little groups and actually have a chance to talk to each other, meet each other, um, and dive into some of our questions. Over to you, Noan. Yeah, I, I just have a short share that uh, works off of not ChatGPT, but uh, I, I found myself searching for a way to creatively tell a story of how I wanted to build a school. Uh, and I'm a storyteller. I can come up with the words. I can create the characters. Those parts are fine, but I'm also somebody who's very visual. And so I, and I, I haven't got 
the time or uh, haven't developed the skill to create art for this. And so I decided, you know what, I'm going to take a leap and see if I can learn how to prompt AI to help me develop a story. So this is, again, using AI as a collaborator. And I did it for, uh, for my own purposes, but I can see this as being such a big part of what we're doing in education in general is finding beautiful ways to collaborate with AI. So I'm just going to share with you guys a couple just shots. I, I wanted to tell the story of a... Uh oh I'm, I'm, anyway. I'm sad that a few people had to pop off and teach because they would love to see this. There's something about when you showed this to me, Noan, as it comes up, um, it br brought it to life. Like when we talk about concepts, when you can see it in this format. Yeah, so I... I wanted to tell the story of a uh, of a young girl growing up in Dubai with a totally different edge on education. And so I spent actually not 30 seconds, but I spent a couple days learning how to develop prompts that would uh, produce the type of work that I wanted to con to have consistent characters to understand what kind of style I needed to uh, reference. But a couple of days to create something that felt cohesive to me was such a powerful evolution. And so here's just some of the output of this story. And uh, and so I was able to submit a very visual piece uh, for, for this job proposal, actually. And taking that new angle, taking that new bend was enough to land me a new job, which is kind of exciting. Uh, but also just to me share shows a bit of that power of what what can still come. I mean, this is from mid journey, which you run off of a discord server. It's in beta still. Uh, it's amazing to see what these tools are already producing. Um, I've seen I've seen artist friend uh, Steve McDonald, amazing artist, follow him on Instagram. He produces dozens of works a day with AI assist and his art style has flourished, uh, not been diminished by that. And so just throwing it out there that this is also a tool that is going to allow us a lot of new creative inlets for all these different things. Uh, Love your hopeful <laughs> lens, Noan. Um, do you want to, Sky's ready to break everybody into little groups? to discuss. Noan, do you want to tee it up with a question and, and prompt? Yeah. Uh, and it comes down again to this level of optimism. Uh, I approach things optimistically because looking at it pessimistically, there's a lot of that in the world too. And uh, sometimes fun to have a balance. Uh, so in this case, I'm wondering how are we limited by our human capacities in the learning organizations we've created? And how might AI help us beyond these limits? Uh, so it's a general question. Uh, you get three people to talk to about this. And I'm really excited to hear some of the comments. If you'd like to summarize and put it in Padlet, it makes it so rich to see where people took this question. How are we limited by our human capacities and how might AI support us in going beyond these limits? Great. Thank you. Sky, go ahead and pop us in our little groups and we can meet each other. And then we'll pop out and have a little discussion. Sky, am I in a room or you can pop me in? Um, yeah, I think I can add you to, because some people hopped off right before. Because they didn't want to go in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can. Can I add I'll just join. A... I'll just join one. I think room three only has two people. Okay. I'll join. Yeah. Room three or room eight. Oh, I'll join eight. Human capacity limit. Hey, Hope. Hey. 
How are you? I'm good. Hello, good. Home. Hi, Toan. I'm so glad you could join us. Welcome. Thank uh, you. We've yeah. connected so many times on Twitter. So <laughs> have you? Oh, I love that. Yep. yep. Like old friends here. Okay. <laughs> um, before yeah. we dive into the question, do you want to dive in directly or did you have anything that popped up uh, for you in the last hour of listening in? Is there anything that struck you as? Yeah, so uh, I I joined in late, so I didn't really catch the first part of the conversation. Okay. Yeah. Well, we will. Kelly, do you want to share anything that was poignant to you? Yeah, I mean, I'll just jump into the AI stuff. The, the previous conversation was interesting. We learned about how people are using AI to learn, like in building new programs, right? Like new schools and new ideas. And I think when I've experimented with AI mid journey and with chat GPT three, I had a very interesting experience in real life where I had a friend who I met here. I'm new to Lisbon, right? So I'm meeting new people and she's like, yeah, I have this meetup where we do imaginative visualization and childlike play. And I said, that's how I feel when I use chat GPT. Like I'm as a child playing again, you know? And she said, what's chat GPT? And I said, I said, really? I said, I'm not the one to explain this to you. Don't ask me. <laughs> Go Google it. I said, but I will come to your event. And I went to her event and it was so playful and so fun. And we really just, like a kid, we all played together. We did a little bit of visualization exercise. So you kind of like take away all the ego and preload, you know, your little I'm robot brain. Notes, by like, the way, of your awesome Sure, share. sure. Yeah. It was like so playful. And then after, by the end of it, I will tell you, I was the priest of a wedding between dragons and butterflies. And we had this super cute, like there were maybe 10 or 12 people there. Um, it sounds really silly, but you have to be silly in order to play when you're a kid. So I had this like weird in-person online experience that took me into this other world. Um, when I first kind of started playing with Chad GPT. So oh, wow. it helped me become more playful in my life in general. Really? That's what I, that's my theme of this year is playfulness. So I think it's working. That's so cool. I've never heard people use it Thanks. like that. And, and I don't know who is delivering mm. this workshop, but that sounds like a really cool thing to offer to more people because I'm seeing chat, not everybody knows what chat GPT as, is at all. And they might yeah. get exposed to a very dry, methodical, machine-like kind of tool. Whereas it sounds like you had a completely different experience and how wonderful that would be to share with more people. Right. Like if you, it's not, this isn't going to take your job and, you know, like take yeah. away things that it's not a, it's not scary, right? We can use it and yeah, it's a useful technology. That's, it's so a good theme, cool. Hope, useful tech. Yeah. Um, um, with play. I think about that when I introduce it to my parents, for example, like, I don't really want to tell them what ChatGPT is, like, but I also don't want them finding out about it from Instagram videos or whatever doing right. scrolling they're doing. <laughs> What's been your experience, Toan? Do you, do you? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess I'm approaching this from an angle of a student because like I'm just 17 and I'm still um, doing uni right now. So the way that I use um, AI in general and ChatGPT, let's, let's go with AI in general, right? So uh, right now I'm using an AI program called Reclaim.ai. And it's basically, there's an AI that help you with scheduling of your time. Just like um, the normal problem with scheduling things in your calendar is that if one thing doesn't go right, then it mess up with your entire day. But with yes. this AI, then you can put it in there. And then if you want to reschedule or if you want to uh, prioritize something else, you can just press a button and it will move everything around for you. So that's something that's really uh, helpful for me in my day-to-day -day, uh, productivity task management. Okay. And yeah, so for ChatGPT in particular, um, like I have been, I have been really deep into like 
the science of learning and learning how people learn. Like I, I have a Twitter account that's dedicated towards it right now. And the way that I use it is to like, if there is handle, sorry to interrupt, Toan, what's your handle so I can stick it on the notes? Uh, yeah, learning it's a learn. Yeah, you got it right. <laughs> learning. I'm a true fan. Learning Toan. T O A N. <laughs> learning Toan. Yeah. Yeah. So, um. Thank you. Sorry for cutting you off. Go ahead, please. Yeah. No. No problem. Like, the the system that I learned is from Doctor Justin Song. And he's a medical doctor who specializes in helping people learn. He's a learning coach and he has an entire course about it. And like, yeah, I'm taking his course. I'm learning his system. And basically it's, it's all about like, um, before you're studying, you have like a pre-study session where you really prior, like familiarize yourself with the material and like getting a bigger picture of what you're about to study. And like from there, this will give you like a big um, mind map that you can vision that you're going to learn. And then in the learning session, we, we use uh, uh, inquiry-based learning. So we learn through questions and we prioritize questions that are engaged with higher order of thinking, like uh, why is this important? How does this relate to that? And how do I apply this? And afterwards, we have like retrieval practice, uh, which is like the space repetition and the using like the interval training so that we mix it up and make it more effective. Mm, wow. And yeah, that, that sounds like a lot. <laughs> and uh, the way that I use AI is that um, I use AI to like really collect the keywords in the pre-study phase so that I have a list of keywords from my material. Because from there, from the material, from the keywords, I can generate chunks of information and those chunks become like the branches of my mind map hmm. and and like I don't want the chat GPT to generate the the entire chunk for me because like that would reduce my cognitive load and like um, I won't be thinking that hard about it and then that would reduce the effectiveness of the method so I'm just Good using point. it to like getting the keywords and also like it's, I also use ChatGPT for the inquiry-based learnings. So like uh, if I have a question, I'll just ask it because like some of the questions are pretty low level, so it's easy to answer. And it's fa much faster to search it through ChatGPT than going through the entire textbook trying to find the specific, right. specific answer for it. I, I hope I answer your question. <laughs> oh, you totally no, it's amazing. Did. I got it. Makes, makes yeah. me think of uh, building a second brain a little bit. Are you doing any of those yeah. practices with uh, Surge? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm not working with Surge right now, Uh, but I've heard about the second brain um, thing a lot. Like um, there's like a lot of software. You could use Notion, Obsidian, um, I've been trying this thing called Napkin and like um, it's sort of similar to Obsidian and like the Rome research, mm. but basically there's an, another AI <laughs> that generate the tags for you. So like you uh, cool. don't have to do the tags by yourself and that could save you a lot of time and it's much faster to like search for things. Uh, I know there's another one that's gaining popularity. It's called mem.ai. And it's mem .ai? yeah, yeah, and it's it's basically like a tool to like keep track of of your resource, but also like it's also a writing tool. So like whenever you write something, it could pull those resources from the from the memory and add it as a citation or as a source in your writing. Yeah, wow. so that's also pretty cool. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's super powerful because when we like I'm I'm in writing course, right? In rite of passage, I've been a, I'm a lifetime student and now I'm gonna be a writing mentor. And so much of the pre-programming is setting up your second brain, your knowledge management system. And it's the same thing I'm doing in my consultancy right now as a project manager, is I'm helping people I'm helping this company 
set up the mind map, basically the company plan. And then in the working sessions, we do, it's a learning session, but I'm calling it a working session, right? It's the same right. exact thing. And I wonder too, if the summer is I see a lot about summarization, right? I wonder if this keyword and summarization will help in some sort of efficiency, like, you know, Otter is already doing it. How can we use Otter to summarize the meeting so we can go to less meetings and spend our time doing yes. other things? That's how I, that's what I think Otter, about. Otter, you mean AI, right. Okay. Like, yeah, so, any yeah. tool, like, pause, yeah, upgrade your tech tools with, with AI support. Okay. Like napkin, you know. Um, but, um, yeah. What about the question? There's a great video in here on the Padlet, by the way. Um, I'll invite you guys Ooh. to check out the, all the little notes on Padlet and link. I'm in Padlet here. Yeah. Great. The video gives you philosophical thought around our human limits. And it's, it's called the understanding line. And maybe you're aware of it, but it's like, what is that line for us? to as humans as like what's possible we have a conditioning and education and culture that like blocks us from seeing potentially you know infinitely more information more options and i wonder how ai is is going to shift that understanding line of you know our our human capacity can we stretch it with ai i wonder what your thoughts are on that Tohan, you are a learning expert. What do you think? I, I'm not a learning expert. I'm I'm just your like, own learning expert. Yeah. <laughs> do you feel you have an understanding line? Like, is there something that you're like, I can kind of understand to this point, and that's probably all I'll be able to understand. Or do you feel there's some like give and agility to that understanding line that AI might be helping or might be able to help in the future? Yeah, I think you're you're reminding me of like the Dunning Kruger effect, where like in the beginning when you don't know a lot, then you feel like you're at the top of the mountain, mm -hmm. and then the more you learn, the more that you realize that you're not that good, and then mm -hmm. you go down this valley, and at the bottom they I think they call it like the valley of disappointment, right. and then from from there slowly you get like more enlightenment that you slowly progress and you see that there's actually like so much more that you need to learn. And I, um, I think that in the beginning, like when I didn't know anything, I thought I knew everything, mm -hmm. but then the more that I learned, the more that I realized that I had more to learn. Mm -hmm. And like, I think AI really helped me was like getting the different perspective from and different angles to look at something and like connecting the dots from at a different way from a different way because like um there's this i think there's a principle in learning they call it uh analogous learning or analogous uh relationship where you learn something best when you associate it so with something that you already know uh, it could right. be a form of basic association and yeah, the more angle, the more um, different perspective that you can see something, the stronger that you feel like the things are connected. And mm -hmm. then that would like really help with uh, retention. And yeah, that's just something that I notice when using AI. Mm -hmm. That's very clear. Very clear. Like the more connections we can make, the more that sort of expanse of what our learning capacity can be not just a singular line, but like the web of connections, which brings, yeah, me, exactly. like, we're talking in language, like learning ecosystems, learning communities. It's not like I go to school, I do this, like the more compartmentalized learning is now expanding. Yeah. We're expanding, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a good point. You just break down this barrier between like calling it what it is. Like we're here to, keep developing and I think the helpful thing for me when I discovered like knowledge management systems is like you don't always have to keep it in your head like you can mm. 
rely on the paper, on the technology to put your second brain. That's why it's called building a second brain because you don't have to keep it all in. And a lot of this, um, there's another method called, oh, I just lost his name, but there's another method where you start with claims. It uh, starts with a Z. I'll have to come back to you with the name. The Zettelkast? You start with... The Zettelkast? Like a lot of... Zettelkast, uh, yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. Do you guys mind putting That's some mine. of these cool links in Paddle? Other people are, and that this will be like an amazing yes. board of resources. Thank you both so much. That was Thank great. You. Great to have you in our chat. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Inspired by everybody here. I had such a cool room. I don't know about you guys. Did you have enough time? To chat? 15 minutes was good, yeah. yeah. Never enough time to chat. Yeah, just getting just started. Like friends and yeah. <laughs> and I forgot about the extra minute. My father out of the chat. Room. I was I was in with your father. He had some tremendous ideas. I was, yeah, very okay. Great, great start. Yeah. Good. Amazing. Hi, everybody. Coming back in. I went to town and really started adding some amazing thoughts from room eight. I was very fortunate to be with Tuan and Kelly um, Davis. Please, I invite you to pop your ideas, your realizations, questions, and also resources and links in this artifact we're creating that we can share with each other on Padlet. Um, does anyone wanna put their hand up and share? Um, about your discussion. Sam Young, do you want to hop up? Go ahead, please. I, I, sort of just a general uh, comment. I was mentioning this as people were sort of popping back in, but I wanted to make sure everybody catches it, but just really grateful to be here and feeling really inspired by not only the work that you all are doing, but the the from from students to teachers to everyone in between, you know, just like the the level of of intellect and and curiosity and, and strength to go into this new space with an open mind, ask questions, um, think at a very high, you know, moral, philosophical, ethical level, and then also sort of be on the ground using prompts and things. It's such an all encompassing, impressive. Uh, dynamic and I just appreciate you and, and a, a big shout out you know Hope and Nuan for for hosting so thank you thank you Sam so much appreciate you <sighs> Kate um, I'll jump in um, I had such a cool chat um, with Serge and I was really amazed by his presentation anyway um, and the technologically focused future that he seems to have his um, fingertips in everywhere. And I got really inspired about how we can bridge that gap um, between storytelling and tech and how, you know, social emotional learning, for instance, is combined with these processes that take us out of these traditional environments. Um, but it, it like such a cool what a really cool conversation and it feels like it needs to be so much longer. Right. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks for your hosting this. This was like pretty mind boggling. I've learned a lot. So looking forward to hearing everybody else's 10 cents. Thanks, Just Kate. ripping off of Kate's point. Like I think the importance of young people discovering what their story is and what their unique position in the world is absolutely essential. Like, they're not homo economicus. They're not just here to get a job, right? So we're not training them just for that and leaning into storytelling, self-discovery, self-awareness. Um, yeah, absolutely essential work. And hopefully we have more time to do now that we have AI in the classroom. Thank you. Jesse, Rosalind. Yeah, we talked a little bit about the industrial revolution and uh, how schools have not changed very much since that point and how if you piece things apart, like you can look at, um, you know, where schools serve like a childcare piece and where they serve as a, you know, human flourishing piece, where they serve as developing leaders in society. And then, you know, 
pivoting from that, looking at the um, how schools that are linked to governments and states and, and nations are often very slow and bureaucratic. And the group that we're in here is often more fast paced, moving, looking at internationally, looking at um, different things that are coming up and adapting and adopting them. So, you know, I also think that it's we're going to be looking at equity issues in terms of, you know, who is able to um, benefit from this type of learning and evolution and how then does that get rolled out to perhaps many of the public schools that might be moving more slowly and need a, and maybe have a, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but an aging teaching force that need to be reinvigorated and given the tools to understand how to teach this. Because I think the students will adapt very quickly. Like I know, you know, when I first got the iPhone, I was like, there's no instructions. How do you do this? And my kids are like, whatever, like I'm five, I can do this. So I think the kids are going to have no problem adjusting to this. It's more the teachers that are going to be like, the kids have the growth mindset built in. It's mm. the adults that are more frozen. Great point. Jesse Driver, did you want to share anything? So you just pop up. Oh, that was accidental. No, thank you for hosting. Okay, great. Um, anybody else? No one, go ahead. Yeah, our uh, room seven, we we kind of came at it with it changes everything. I mean, so much of the academics of, of learning starts to look a little frail and uh, we, we can revisit so many pieces and something that Serge mentioned in his presentation really stood out uh, which is that we can focus on wholeness and well-being as major parts of what our learning journey can be. And what better thing for our world to do at this point than take those and make those a priority and deprioritize a whole bunch of the other crap that just adds stress anyways. So <laughs> thanks, room seven. Woo! Um, I'm hoping that I, Kelly, I would love for you to share your story about learning about AI and being silly and playing. I think Phil Moore, you're gonna love this. I think Alina, you're smiling. Like there are many ways to be introduced to this technology and chat GPT. And Kelly shared how she played around with it, which made my face light up. <laughs> Thanks Hope. Yeah, happy to share. I um, just moved to Lisbon, so I'm new in the city and I was joining some meetup events and I met a friend through some events and she was having an, uh, hosting an event about imaginative visualization and childlike play. And I asked her what would happen at this type of event. I want to know before I'm going. And she said, yeah, we're just gonna play like kids. And I was like, okay, that sounds like chat GPT. It sounds like what I'm doing when I'm using mid journey and chat GPT. So uh, I went to the event and <laughs> excuse me. And basically it was a, a very playful event. We kind of did a little bit of visualization in the beginning, like uh, group meditation and got really playful and then just ended up playing for like an hour. And there were like 12 people. And she, she basically responded like, what's chat GPT? I've never heard of this. And I was like, I, I can't really explain this to you. Maybe you can go search it yourself and find out. But um, after attending the event, I'm kind of interested in how these two are connected and how it's helping me be more playful in my life, whether or not it's chat GBT or things in person or just kind of like having more curiosity and, and feeding the robots and also feeding our own needs like that big whole, wholeness and well-being. So um, yeah, thanks for giving me the space, Hope, and for sharing this event. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah. I, being more silly, being more human, having more love and hope, let's not forget any of these vital ingredients. And also to all of you amazing humans, we see you and the work you're doing. And I just want to give a huge shout out to the people who shared today. Um, for those who put links and notes in Padlet, I'm going to share that as an artifact for all of you guys to keep adding to and gleaning from. Um, I really appreciate all of you. And uh, 
I'm going to put the recording of this in Hope Sparks Network. Please join us. Noan, did you want to share anything or say anything? It's pretty late for you in Bali. Thank you. It is. Uh, it was a treat. And uh, what an awesome group of people to spend almost to midnight with. So thank you, guys. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. We will be capturing ideas of if we're going to continue threads on learning about AI and tools or all the other topics that we can dive into together. So if you've got ideas, suggestions, you know where to find me. Um, have a wonderful day. Thank you for spending it with us and be in touch. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a wonderful Thank day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. A toan, wait, we need a we need a no one and a toan special <laughs> event, please. <laughs> Dream team. Yes, I got Both of her, yes. I got Toan in my room. It was so great. They're in the same time zone. They they can you can Seriously? work this out. Yes. Toan, Toan, where are you? Uh, I'm in Vietnam. It's uh oh, 10 right 30. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, you got an hour earlier, almost the same time zone. Nice to yeah. meet you. Toan. I'm no one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It must be a special event for your network, Hope. <laughs> no one and oh. Toan. <laughs> yeah, I feel very, very lucky and fortunate. Um, what a great group. And I hope people reached out to you, Serge. Um, and they will. I'm sure they'll keep reaching out. Yeah, lots of things to follow up with. Great. Yeah, great job facilitating, guys. And uh, yeah, uh, always, yeah. always super fun. Uh, um, yeah, we're we're going to have to chat some more because it's just so cool seeing what you're doing. And you're just a fun guy to hang with. So uh, yeah, that's Hank. <laughs> sure awesome. awesome. Cool, guys. Yeah. I'm going to hop, but I'm um, lovely yeah. catching up. Tom, Thank you. Um, we need to catch up as well, Tawan. Um, send me a, li a message. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.